What's up everybody? My name is Adam Watts and I'm here at Broken City Studios on behalf of Broken City Artists as well as Black Swamp Percussion. And I'm going to take you through my approach to the drum set and while I do that I'll be playing this drum that is just two weeks old, this little guy. I'm in love with it a lot. Solid Bacote Black Swamp drum with the multi-sonic strainer. The thing is ridiculous. Honestly, this is kind of like the kind of drum that you grow old with and then pass down to your kids. And if they're not drummers, you don't pass it on to your kids. You get buried with it. That's the kind of drum this is. And so as I go through and show you my approach, I'll probably be using mostly the three center guts. That's kind of my favorite. It's a really dry sound. It's the 8B, 6G, and 8S. And I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you so much for watching. And you can check out more of the Broken City Artist world and our approach to arts in general at wearebrokencity.com. Thank you so much for watching. Over to you, Adam. What's up, everybody? My name's Adam Watts. I'm one of those faceless, mostly behind the scenes guy. I'm a writer, producer. I started out as a drummer, um, also a solo artist. And I would say I work mostly in the realm of popular music, the very general kind of definition of what that is. Pop music, rock, R&B, maybe a little hip hop thrown in here and there, all that kind of stuff, you know, groove oriented stuff. I have a background in um, <clears throat> some jazz and fusion also. And worked with a bunch of different artists uh, throughout all those different genres. And uh, I want to take you through three different layers, <clears throat> excuse me, three different layers of, of drumming that to me speak a lot to what I love about playing and what really suits um, playing drums in a modern environment and context. And um, this is by no means a, this is the right way or wrong way to play. You can play however you want. There are thousands of ways to play. And even within these three approaches, there are layers and layers and layers of nuance. But for the sake of this video, I just want to kind of crack the door open to these three things and speak a little bit more in extremes. So the first of the three is our human body. So how do we relate to the drum kit, to an individual drum, with our bodies? And a couple of the core things that I think about is how we situate ourselves within space and relative to gravity is one of the most important things, I believe. Because we're doing something extremely physical. So I like to think of my center of gravity as being rooted in my drum throne and in my kind of in my butt bones so in my hips i'm doing stuff with all four limbs so if every time you shift your center of gravity to sort of uh compensate for for leaning or from hitting a drum a certain way there are adjustments you need, you're making that actually affect your time when it might actually not be like a mental issue with time or even like a physical technique thing you might find you have great time when you're playing on a practice pad or playing just on the snare, but when you go from hi-hat to ride or something, you find that your time shifts. And one of the main reasons I believe for this is that you, you might be changing your center of gravity and having to adjust your body, and therefore you end up hitting something a little late or a little early because of the, that adjustment you're making. So I would focus on, to so just try this out, is to sit really deep in your chair and, and think of your weight as always being rooted there no matter what you're hitting, whether it's with, with a foot or, or a hand. Is to really think about feeling that impact go all the way to your, to your hips, to your butt bone, to your, the seat of your chair. Bam. So this is something that really when you think about hitting things, as drummers do, the physical side of it, there's, it's related in many ways to hitting anything else. So 
you know, I look to boxers and mixed martial artists. Um, they always say that the most powerful punches are rooted in your hips. It's all about, if you want to throw a really hard punch, you, you sit down on your punches, that's what they say, um, and you turn your hips. It's all about center of gravity and, move, and putting your whole body into it. Now, you don't necessarily be, need to be putting your whole body into every hit if you're playing at lower dynamic levels, but what it really helps with is that you, you have the ability to hit soft and feel every one of those strokes, even though it's soft, to feel it really deep. Whatever dynamic level you're hitting at. Consider how our bodies are made and what's the most kind of direct line to getting our point across and whatever we're playing. So the way I think of that is like our bodies as a machine, you know, a, a series of mechanisms. So what I think about is the simpler I'm playing, the more I think of larger muscle groups and also, you know, my skeleton. It's really my skeleton playing in a way. So you have these hinges like a machine would. You know, your, your elbow joint, your wrist joint, shoulder, hips, um, you know, those are the main kind of like action points that you have, so, or pivot points. So the simpler you're playing, if you don't involve these, these tiny muscle groups as much, you're less likely to have, um, your margin of error will shut, will close, and you'll have less things to worry about because you're not like playing simply, but letting all these muscle groups work. Like I like to think of, picture this, like an old school metronome is, you know, a metal rod on a hinge, almost like an elbow or something, or like a shoulder hinge, and it just moves like this. So in order to keep time, they mechanized this thing called a metronome to just do this. So if you were to think of drumming in that same way, if we were playing something simple like eighth notes on the hi-hat, for example, that's similar to like how a metronome moves. Now imagine if a metronome, instead of being made of this stiff metal thing with a pivot point, um, it was just like a string. I mean, how, how great would the time keeping mechanism of, of a metronome be if it was like made of rubber and string and it was just kind of flopping around? So I think about that. Make it easy on yourself so that you can get across what's inside you. So instead of like this kind of thing, it's more of this, not more things can go wrong. So just, you'll notice this with a lot of really great time drummers throughout history, guys like Jeff Porcaro or, you know, John Bonham, Steve Ferrone, Ferroni. Guys that have really good time, you'll notice that they're, there's a certain way that they're playing that's a little bit less about flailing and more about when, when you can operate in big muscle groups like that. Now, point number two that I want to work on today is uh, touch. So touch is about, now we're, we've gone from the body now to, out to the stick. What's, what's happening on impact and what, what does that mean? So. I think of it, to talk in extremes again, again there are you know, hundreds and hundreds of layers in between all of these things, but I want to keep it really kind of on polar opposites and extremes. So touch, I like to think of two extremes, hitting on the drum and hitting into the drum. When you're hitting onto the drum, the most extreme way to get that tone, onto the drum is a more open tone, um, it brings the tone out of the drum, and so to accentuate that, I like to think of stick resonance also. So if you, if you, most of us are aware that if you hit a stick, it's got its own tone. So to maximize tone and resonance and, and bigness, you want a loose, a looser grip and you want to hit onto the drum. So So that gives you kind of that and sound. Now the opposite, into the drum, is for another fighter ref reference, there's 
don't know if you guys have ever heard of uh, the Bruce Lee one inch punch, but it was all about velocity. He'd put his fist like at one inch from somebody and then, yeah! So that's getting the, this intensity of, of velocity. So it's a lot about, like you see the, the on the drum, it's like a very consistent speed and you're on the drum and you have a loose grip. So the opposite would be almost like you're hitting on a surface like an inch below the drum. So you're hitting into the drum and there's a lot of velocity. And when I do this, to get that maximum amount of intensity and, and authority, that emotion of authority and strength, you hit into the drum and you choke the stick. The difference between that and so you notice the pitch goes up and there's a strength to it. So right upon impact, squeeze the stick and relax afterwards. So relax before, relax after, into the drum, total intensity. Although you don't want to necessarily bury the beater, if, depending on how uh, your bass drum is tuned, you can get those krr, which sometimes I get because I, I have this drum tuned in a certain way for the studio. But so you're talking about into the drum. This is really powerful. The difference between I'm not necessarily bringing the sticks any higher, but you can see that I'm hitting in, and it gives you that intensity of sound. So the third thing that I want to talk about is dynamics. So you got the body, you got touch, and then the next thing is what we're doing with dynamics. So in modern pop, rock, hip hop, R&B, that side of things, you want to think about dynamics, or I like to think about dynamics as in two major uh, points. Like you have super loud and super soft. So it's almost like you got one guy, one huge dude with a baseball bat, and he's hitting the drum, and then you got some little dude that's playing all the quiet stuff. And so you get these two major uh, levels of intensity that you can play in. Some people call those ghost strokes. And then loud. A very important part of this in terms of thinking in extremes is um, the concept of freezing down. Start all notes and end all notes at an inch above the head or hi-hat. And what this does is allows you to play at any dynamic level and be ready for anything at any time. And a great way to practice that is on the drum kit is to do rim shots for the accents and play into the drum and then play on the drum for the unaccented ghost notes and then maybe move the kick drum. So what you do is you play one and a two and a three and a four and a with accents on each beat, each quarter note and then you move the kick drum over each bar, you move it over one sixteenth note. So for the first bar, it's on the one, second bar, it's on the E, then the and, then the uh, and then you keep closing that in. So it becomes a whole bar of each, two beats of each, and then one beat of each. So sounds something like this. Even add, uh, make it a little bit more intense and do tap rolls and move the kick drum. So you have an accent on one and then three diddles. So here's what that would sound like with the rolls, two beats of each. Practice those both with singles and doubles, just around the kit. Okay, so to demonstrate all three of these concepts, 
center of gravity, how we relate to the drum kit, thinking in terms of on the simpler stuff, levers, and then also um, touch into the drum, on the drum, two different intensities, and then also dynamics. So really thinking in those extreme two dynamic levels. So I'm going to play a groove for you that kind of expresses those things. And I'm going to use everything that the multisonic strainer has to offer. Right, guys thanks for watching i'm adam watts from broken city artists you can visit us at wearebrokencity.com or brokencityartists.com thank you black swamp percussion and uh, i'll be seeing you guys soon